And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're talking about a Kickstarter, what's he building in there, which is a riff on the mad scientist theme set in the late 1800s. You know, you hear the clanking sounds from the laboratory. There's Frankenstein in there. What's he doing exactly? Well, this puts you in the role of one of these mad scientists, and then you have to try to become the best mad scientist. Let me show you how. Remember that what I'm showing you here is a prototype and some of the things are going to change uh, in this game. For example, these are very thin boards and they'll be changed to thicker ones when the game is produced. At the beginning of the game, each player is given a project you're working on. Like this is a neuterizing bomb or maybe you'll get the death ray or the insane O gas. And then a player will also get their escape, for example, a car boat, which is one of the most awesome escape things ever, or your typical uh, submarine or hovercraft, etc. Now, what you're going to do is you, your goal over the course of the game is to accomplish at least one stage in both of these. And what happens is these are going to fit together and they form a shield that you'll have in front of you. Uh, but what you're looking at here is there's stage one, stage two, and stage three. If you accomplish stage one, you get 10 points, 18 points, 30 points, 14, 25, 38. They're different points for the different ones. However, you need to accomplish everything here. I need to have a certain amount of uh, genius at work points, a certain amount of manual labor points, these resources, and have invented these two items, or at least have these two inventions. And you can see that the farther you go down, the more stuff you're going to need as time goes by. If you don't accomplish at least stage one of both of these, you will lose the game by the end of the game. Uh, but if you have, then you'll add those points to any other points you have earned over the course of the game. This game is what we call a worker placement game. There's 15 turns that are kept track of on this turn track, and each player is given a mad scientist and three minions. And so in turn order, players are going to place these on the board in the different spots that are available. Now, the different spots that you can place them on have different background colors. If it's an orange spot, only your mad scientist can go there. If it's a blue spot, only your minion can go there. And there are some spots where it is both colors, so either one can go there. There are spots for multiple people, and there are spots for only five or six players uh, when playing the game. So players are going to take turns putting these out, and when they're finished, they will start on this side of the board, and they will start with number one here, and they'll go through and accomplish everything. Now these here are cards, not spaces, because there's a different number put out. This is for a four-player game, four of these cards, but also uh, the cards will change from round to round. The first section here are the workshops. You will mostly go to these to either take a resource or get a refined resource. There are lots of different resources that you'll need, like here's leather and refined leather and glass and raw refined glass, etc. So when you go to one of these spots, for example, the tannery, will g if I send a doctor there, he will give me three hides. Uh, if I send a henchman there, he'll give me two. Instead of doing that, though, I can change two hides into a refined hide and the henchman can do the same thing. The doctor can do it twice if I want. The thing here that's really important is whoever's first decides. So if they decide that this is the tanner is going to be used to produce hides, then so be it. If they decide it's going to be used to refine hides, so be it. And second and third uh, character have to do the same thing or can't do it at all. The next spot is the black market. This is a spot where you'll basically get a lot of money or get the starting player token or you can change resources, that's what that symbol here means, into other resources. There's different cards that will show up to have to do with that. Up here if you put your workers and there's a spot here where there's unlimited workers allowed or scientists anyway, this is where you get your genius at work points and down here you send your minions to get your manual labor points. And then over here you have three tracks and each of these tracks, well, these manual labor and genius are also tracks, but here you, you use your cubes to keep track 
and you have to go one step at a time and you'll have to pay a cost to go to each one with money but at the end of the game they will give you a certain amount of points also so for example if I get the ballroom dancing lessons I will have 10 points at the end of the game but if I manage to go all the way over and get a proper engagement I'll get 23. This is the, of course, social track because you want people to like you. Then there's the security track and the exotic pets track. I mean, who wants to? I mean, you, you want to own a crocodile. Uh, you have this real estate one's really important because if you don't own that by turn five, you pay a coin in rent for the rest of the game, and you also need it to go farther than these other spots. I can't have a secure fence unless I have my own house. I'm not going to pay it to put it on my own rented property. So after all the workers are resolved, players have the opportunity to buy these inventions. These are needed uh, at, to you know, build your project. You'll need different inventions, but also they give points here. So each player in turn order can spend the resources needed to buy this invention. And that's how many points they'll get at the end of the game. However, the first person to buy it, from now on, after that, anyone who wants to buy that same one has to pay the inventor. In this case, they have to pay five gold coins to the person who invented it. They have to spend less time using their genius points to work on it, but they can invent it. So there's all different things to invent, including duct tape, which will lose you points, but can help you get the manual labor that you need. Then over here, there's a few special inventions that you can build. These give you points, and when these go away, uh, like copper pipe spawning or a sleeping potion bomb, you know, they are replaced by something different, but they basically give you a special ability that you can use throughout the course of the game. At the end of the game, which is after 15 turns, everyone checks to see if they've won, uh, or lost, I should say, not having their projects completed. And then if they do, you compare the points for what levels you've completed, the points you've gotten from inventions, and the points for how far you are on these tracks, uh, with a couple other bonus points on those tracks, and whoever has the most points is the winner. There's a lot of interesting mechanics and things in this game. It's based on worker placement as you put these workers out. And some of the unique things about this one is that you have different workers. The mad scientist, you're going to want to put him everywhere on the board, but he can only go to one spot. And there's 15 turns, so 15 different spots, you're going to put him over the course of the game. The minions, you have more of them, but they're more restricted. But even then, this game, turn order is going to matter a lot because you are going to want to go to so many places first. You're going to want money. You're going to want to get the extra manual labor points. You're going to want to get the resources before other people do. There's a lot of back and forth in this game as players are really messing each other over by going to the spot that they want to go to. And that gets even more pronounced with the more players in the game. The theme comes through very strongly. I mean, you're trying to build some event invention, but as you invent these things, as you go to the different places, as you loudly proclaim, cackling your evil laugh that, ah, ha, ha, I have an ostrich now or what have you. Um, I, I, it's, it's very enjoyable. It's a very solid, good Euro game and one that we really enjoyed playing. Um, so what's he building in there is on Kickstarter right now. You have a chance to go and support it in just a moment. We'll show you the link. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.